Oh, wow. I never heard that before. There's a big voice sort of said recording in progress. Okay. <laughs> oh, my God. The Holy Spirit. Me too. Spoke. <laughs> Me too. Okay. Yeah, I heard that. My goodness. All right. So recording in progress. Uh, there you go. All right. So, um, uh, right. I've almost forgotten the question. Um, okay. Oh, yes. Observing, observing the person. Okay. So my experience with the, being the observer of the person. So what is the person? Well, uh, the per I mean, I'm, this is how I'll generalize it. The person for me is, um, I usually don't have any experience of body, like being in a physical body. I'd say most of the time, if, I, if there's illness in the body or um, some feelings arise, there may be some slight awareness of body, but observing the body uh, for 20 years, like a lot of the time, I'm not even aware that there is a body. So it's more like, um, how would I describe it? It's more like just observing. Observing seems to go, this doesn't make sense, of course. Observing seems to go everywhere, but there's no body. Uh, there can be, there can be, but usually the sense of body is very subtle. <clears throat> um, so how is it, and I'm just sharing my experience of how it's changed over the 20 years of observing the person, the me. Um, now the thoughts still do, personal thoughts do exist, um, and my experience of thoughts um, is that um, I suspect generally, as a general rule, I think it's more complicated than this, because, uh, put it this way, a, a, an assignment may suddenly arise, even though I've not had something for a long time. But generally speaking, when transcending certain types of thoughts, let me try and think of a thought that I think has dissolved that used to happen in the ego. Um, you know, um, like, uh, well, I'd say that usually, um, you know, hardly ever the thought of asthma comes up. Um, uh, um, yeah, hardly ever. I mean, I did like, and to give an example, like that was one, you know, the kidney, God did not create kidney failure. It is not real. It does not even exist. No such thing as kidney failure exists in this world. That's just a total um, thought. Um, gout, um, asthma, all those. So those ones hardly ever come back again. And it seems almost like the time being, it doesn't exist uh, for, for a very long time. Um, so that, that would be an example of something that I would say is almost, and if it does reoccur, it's very subtle usually. Um, I, I don't really like talking about things which are transcended because Hawkins gave a warning about it, um, about talking about things that are, and are gone. And I'll, I'll share it here just, uh, just in case any of you guys ever have to share your experience in front of others. When you, when you say something that you feel you've transcended, you kind of reawaken it, if that makes sense. Uh, and you may reattach to the thing you're now talking about. So, I mean, the idea with um, my lighting has gone a bit funny. Put it here and put some light in here. Sorry. Uh, OK, that's better. Um, when something has gone, you really don't want to re-remember what you've lost. Uh, and Hawkins, uh, my teacher, of course, the miracles teacher as well, Dr. David Hall, he, he shared this thing. And he used to have hypoglycemia, where if he ate sugar, he would get, you know, the shakes, uh, have all kinds of physical symptoms uh, while eating sugar. So he just he transcended that, he canceled that. And then he could eat chocolates, cakes, um, he could eat hot fudge, such that there was no effect. He was no longer subject to this crazy idea within the collective illusion that sugar and hyperglycemia exist in him, and it didn't exist. So he, with immunity or neutrality, could eat anything. And then he started giving talks to other people, and this was really good for me to hear this, about how hyperglycemia is not real, it's just a fur. And then he started, and then after eating sugar, he started to get the shakes again. And then he had to do some investigation with muscle testing as to what's happening, because that was, you know, it seems like you can eat that and that's not a problem. And by talking about it to others and just uh, talking about it all the time, it came back. So you can, I think everyone can sort of guess what happens if you feel you've transcended something and then you start talking about it, and if it as if it's real, then it can, um, I think everyone is kind of obvious. So, um, so there is, that's if anyone wants to start sharing their experience and what they think they've transcended and said over and over again, you can re-pick it up. 
So uh, hence, um, but anyway, I wanted to share that. So um, I've just talked about gout, haven't I? Or gout or asthma or something. So, um, but yeah, those ones uh, have uh, seemed to uh, disappear-ish mostly. So they hardly ever reoccur. That for me is a thing of transcending all my thoughts and rendering every single thought that had meaning. Have I transcended every every single thought that has meaning or is personal or has some history? No, no, I haven't. So thoughts do still arise. Um, feelings, what about feelings? Generally, oh yes, this is really good. Observing feelings and canceling feelings. Like, is there such a label as guilt? Uh, and is there such a feeling as guilt, for example, or fear or shame or whatever it is? And I would say that, uh, and I, I'll sometimes say I feel fear or something, but what does that mean? Does it mean I feel the same level of fear that I did 20 years ago in the body, sort of uh, apparently? Usually, uh, um, it's very, very subtle. It's more the thought than the, the fear. But yes, you know, I'm sure that, you know, if something, you know, um, I don't know, if, if suddenly someone walked towards me with an axe, or a shotgun uh, looking menacing. I mean, <laughs> probably there would be fear. I definitely had the terror of the death of the ego. That was extraordinary, like something beyond this was not. And Hawkins talked about it, like losing the body is not a big deal. You know, you're about to, I mean, something knows that you've been out of the body multiple times in the, in the story of what seems to be. So it's not really a threat to the ego just being shot dead or something. But um, when you get the sense, if you study enlightenment of this is the terror of the final um, dissolving of the ego forevermore, that's a different, I experienced that once and didn't go through, I shared that before. So feelings I'd say for me now, after 20 years of observing in spiritual work, are generally very subtle when they occur. Um, uh, so it's not, it's definitely nothing like uh, they're more often not, not even body identified, but they are, um, they do exist. Sometimes if there's illness or feelings, there could be some slight body identification, uh, which needs to be cleared. So things are much more subtle. I'd say what hasn't been transcended for sure is the idea of certain thoughts having strong meaning. And that, that is, or, or images or whatever, um, that has strong meaning. Uh, and that, uh, and I guess, um, but anyway, uh, so that's what it's like for me. Basically, if anything has meaning for me, especially thoughts or, um, or people or anything, then it's like full business to transcend that until that person or thought no longer exists for me. Uh, what does that mean? What am I talking about? Because it sounds a bit odd, I think, to anyone who just suddenly listens to this video, like what's, what on earth is he talking about? Um, doesn't exist for me. It means that, for example, if something is witnessed and then uh, uh, and then it's the next moment and that thing seems not to be there, then that's completely gone, out of memory, out of ex existence. So I'll, I'll just sort of share, share this. Actually, Hawkins had a great story, but I'll share it for myself. It's like in the, in the park, you know, the squirrel sort of bounding up from the branches and there's witnessing of that. But as soon as one turns, walks out of the park, or, or it's witnessed that uh, that walking is happening out of the park, uh, I have to use language, I know it's not accurate, then that squirrel and any memory of that squirrel is like it never existed. That's, that's what I mean, you know. There is no drag of the last instant into this instant. So it's like, oh, hi, what's your name? Your name's John, hi, nice to meet you. I turn, and like the body seems to turn away and it's like, one never knew a John and nothing of John exists in the next moment. That, that's kind of what I mean by transcending. Okay, I'll stop there. Uh, great question. That's, I can only show my experience. I know um, Ramana, for example, um, just suddenly had the, the thing of dying and observed the dying and then became an enlightened teacher in one second, didn't have to spend 20 years. So um, my hat's off to Ramana uh, for, for that. Uh, transcending and the dying of the ego within a few seconds that's great okay uh, the course of miracles does say there's no order no order of difficulty in miracles yeah that's true